wipe, wipe, wipe it down, wipe, 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 wipe it down, wipe, 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 wipe it down, wipe, wipe it down. Here we go. On her way home one day, a humble bank clerk happened to see a red fox fur coat in a furrier's shop window. She stopped outside and felt a shiver of pleasure and desire run through her. For this was the coat she had always wanted. There wasn't another one like it. She thought, running her eyes over the other coats hanging from the metal rock or delicately draped over a brocade sofa. It was rare, unique. She had never seen such a color, golden with a coppery sheen and so bright it looked as if it were on fire. The shop was closed at the time, as she discovered when giving in to the impulse to enter. She pushed at the door. She would come back tomorrow as early as possible in her lunch break or during the morning. Yes, she would find a pretext to sleep out during the morning. That night, she slept little and awoke feeling troubled and slightly feverish. She counted the minutes until the shop would open. Her eyes wandered from the clock on the wall to her wrist watch and back, where she dealt with various customers. As soon as she could, she found an excuse to pop out and run to the shop, trembling to think that the coat might have been sold. It had not, she learned, been sold. She felt her breath return. Her heart beat ease, felt the blood drain from her face and resume its measured flow. It could have been made for you, said the saleswoman when the bank clerk put the coat on and looked at herself in the mirror. It fits perfectly on the shoulders and at the waist, and the length is just right, she said. And it really suits your skin tone. Not that I'm trying to pressure you into buying it. She added hurriedly. Obviously, you're free to choose anything you like, but if you don't mind my saying so, the coat really does look as if it had been made for you. Just for you, she said again, with a hint of a smile. How much is it? The bank clerk asked. Half turning round, thus setting the hem of the coat swinging because she found it hard to take her eyes off her own image in the mirror. She recoiled, stunned, when she heard the reply, it cost far more than she had thought, five times more than she could possibly afford. But we can spread out the payment if you like, said the saleswoman kindly. She could always sacrifice her holidays, the bank clerk thought, or divert some of the money intended for a car loan. She could use less heating and eat smaller meals. It will do her good, really, because she was beginning to put on a bit of weight. All right, she said, doing rapid calculations in her head. I'll give you a deposit and start paying next week. But it's definitely mine now, isn't it? Absolutely, said the saleswoman, attaching a sold label to the coat. You can take it away with you when you've paid the third installment. She started visiting the shop at night when it was closed and no one would see her, in order to gaze at the coat through the window. And each time, it brought her more joy. Each time, it will be brighter, more fiery like a red flames that did not burn, but were soft on her skin, like a thick, ample, and folding skin that moved when she moves. It will be admired, as will she. People will turn to stare after her. But it was not this that provoked a secret smile. Rather, she realized that it was an inner satisfaction, an obscure certainty, a sense of being in harmony with herself that spilled over in all these kinds of small ways. It was as if the rhythm of her breathing had changed, had grown calmer and deeper. She realized too, perhaps because she no longer felt tired, that she moved more quickly, that she could walk effortlessly now at twice her usual speed. Her legs were agile, her feet nimble, Everything about her was lighter, quicker, her back, shoulders, and limbs all moved more easily. It must be all to keep fit I've been doing, she thought, because for some reason, she had started taking regular exercise. For a few months now, she had been spending two hours a week running at the track. But what she liked the most was to go running in the forest, on the outskirts of the city, feeling the sand crunch beneath her feet, learning to place her feet on the ground in a different way in direct. Perfect, intimate contact with the earth. She was intensely aware of her body. She was more alive now, more alert, 
All her senses were keener too. She could hear even from some distance away infinitesimal sounds which before would have gone unnoticed. A lizard scurrying through the leaves, an invisible mouse making a twig crack, an acorn falling, a bird landing on a bush. She could sense atmospheric changes long before they happened. The wind turning, a rise in humidity, an increase in air pressure that would culminate in rain. Another aspect of all the things to which she had now become sensitized was the discovery of smell, a whole world of smells. She could find paths and trails purely by smell. It was strange how she had never before noticed that everything has a smell. The earth, the bark of trees, plants, leaves, and that every animal can be distinguished by its own peculiar smells, a whole spectrum of smells that came to her on waves through the air, and which she could draw together or separate out, sniffing the wind, imperceptibly lifting her head. She suddenly became very interested in animals and found herself living through encyclopedias, looking at the pictures, the hedgehog's pale, soft, tender underbelly, the thick hair of uncertain hue, lipping. She pored over the bodies of birds, fascinated, pondering the softness of the flesh behind their feathers, and a single world kept bubbling insistently about inner mind, predator. She seemed to be hungrier too, she thought, as she put away her books and went into the kitchen, and this negative aspect to all the physical exercise displeased her greatly. She tried to find a way to avoid putting on weight and crawled, dissatisfied, past the scissories, never finding what she was looking for. Because the smell of coffee was repellent to her and made her feel nauseous. No, she was hungry for other things. Although she didn't quite know what. Fruit, perhaps? This might be an opportunity to lose a little weight. She bought a vast quantity of grapes and apples and ate them all in one day. But still, she felt hungry. A hidden hunger that gnawed at her from inside and never stopped. She was cheered by an expected invitation to a party, welcoming any diversion that would make her forget that absurd hunger. She, she reveled in getting dressed up and in painting her lips and nails scarlet. Her nails, she noticed, were very long, and even her hands seemed more sensitive, more elongated. Anyone she touched at the party that night would remain eternally in her power. She thought, smiling at herself in the mirror, a feeling smile, it seemed to her. She narrowed her eyes and widened the smile, letting it spread over her face which took on this little triangular shape that she further emphasized with makeup. In the middle of the party, she noticed someone slicing up some meat. Cooked very rare roast beef, she thought, although these words had suddenly ceased to have any meaning. She reached out her hand and devoured a whole slice. Ah, she thought, the taste of almost raw meat, the action of sinking her teeth into it, of making the blood spurt, the taste of blood on her tongue, in her mouth, the innocence of devouring the whole slice, and she took another slice, already sensing that using her hand was now a pointless waste of time, that she should just pick it up directly with her mouth. She burst out laughing and began to dance, waving her blood-stained hands in the air, feeling her own blood rise as if some tempestuous inner force had been unleashed, a malignant force that she could transmit to others, a plague or a curse. But this idea was nevertheless sweet, quiet, almost joyful. She felt as she swayed, slightly drunk, listening to the echo of her own laughter. She would spend the night obeying all these newly released forces, and in the morning, she would go and fetch the coat. Because the day had come that it would be hers, it was part of her. She would know it even with her eyes closed. By touch alone, the soft, thick felt burning her skin, cleaving to her, until she could no longer tell skin from skin. It could have been made for you, the saleswoman said again, as she removed it from the coat hanger. The coat cleaving to her, until she could no longer tell skin from skin. As she could see in the mirror, as she turned the collar up around her head, her face disfigured, suddenly thinner, made up to look longer, her eyes narrow, restless, burning. Goodbye, then, and thanks, she said, running out of the shop, afraid that time was getting short and that people would stop in alarm to stare at her. Because suddenly the impulse to go down on all fours and simply run was too strong. Reincarnating her body, rediscovering her animal body, and as she fled, as she left 
the city behind her and just fled. It took an almost superhuman effort to get into her car and drive to the edge of the forest. Keeping tight control of her body, keeping control of her tremulous body for just one more minute before the slam of the door, that first genuine leap on feet free at last, shaking her back and her tail, sniffing the air, the ground, the wind, and with a howl of pleasure and joy, plunging into the depths of the forest.